Hello and welcome to our seasonal sampler series where each week you learn one or more quilting skills while working on these calendar quilts. In this video you'll learn about some different applique methods while finishing up the springtime sampler. you also learn how to make yo-yos that can be used to decorate the vine. Ready to begin? You'll find the supply list for the sampler below along with links to the free handouts and other videos in this series. These blocks were featured in earlier videos. I've sewn them together into three rows, and each row measures six and a half inches by eighteen and a half inches long. I cut two strips eighteen and a half inches long. One is three inches wide, and the other is four inches wide to account for the height of the bunny. Appliques will be added to these strips and then they'll be sewn to the other rows. To get ready for the applique, draw out your design on paper and then transfer to your fabric. If your fabric's light enough that you can see through to the paper, all you have to do is copy those marks. If your fabric's darker, you might want to try a light box or tape your pattern and fabric to a window. I prefer not to mark up my fabric whenever possible. What I like to do is have all my pieces ready and lay them out without marking. That way I can make adjustments without having to erase any of the lines. For the bottom row of the applique, I used a double-sided fusible. First, I found my pattern out on the internet. I traced that pattern on the paper side of my fusible. Then I placed that on the wrong side of my fabric and I pressed according to the fusible's directions. Cut on the line and then peel off the paper. Lay out your applique pieces on the background and then press in place. I like to stitch around the edges to ensure that this won't lift up in the wash but if you're using it as a wall hanging, this isn't necessary. I used rickrack for my vine. After I pinned it in place, I machine stitched it. If you want to make your vine out of fabric, you'll have to cut that fabric on the bias since this vine curves. In an earlier video in this series, you learned about these bias bars for making straight stems. The process is the same for making this bias strip. Put wrong sides together and stitch a quarter of an inch from the edge. Trim that seam, put the bias bar inside and then press and you have a stem or a vine that can take those curves. To make these leaves I decided to use raw edge applique. Here's my pattern. I'll transfer that to the wrong side of the fabric then cut on the line, pin or glue those leaves in place, and then machine or hand stitch around the edges. These edges can fray after washing or with lots of handling, but this is definitely one of the quickest ways to applique, and since this is a wall hanging, I don't plan on washing it very often. If you'd like a more finished edge, check out our video on stems and leaves. Yo-yos are three-dimensional fabric circles that are fun to make because you don't have to worry so much about being precise. They can be used to embellish sewing or on paper projects or they can be sewn together into whole quilts. They're a good way to use up your scraps. To make a yo-yo you'll start out by cutting a fabric circle. The size of this circle should be double the finished size plus a half of an inch. So if you want a one inch yo-yo, you'll have to multiply that by two and then add a half of an inch. This circle needs to be cut at two and a half inches. Today I'll be using a three inch circle and the finished size will be an inch and a quarter. Just a reminder that you can download this free handout if you're looking for a three inch circle temp template. As always, make sure your fabric's been pressed before cutting and sewing. Transfer your pattern on the wrong side of the fabric. 
out your circle and turn to the wrong side. I'm using dark thread so you can see, but you'll want to use a matching thread. Make sure your thread's strong because you'll be tugging at it. I use a double strand just to ensure it's extra strong. Knot the end, turn over about a quarter inch seam, and hide that knot in between the seam allowance. Continue turning down that quarter inch seam, it doesn't have to be perfect, and start stitching to keep that seam allowance in place. Your stitches don't have to be small. As a matter of fact, they should be more like basting stitches. You can also thread the fabric onto your needle to go a little bit faster. Continue stitching in this manner until you've gone all the way around the circle. Then I like to add one more stitch at the end. Pull up your thread. Sometimes a perfect yo-yo will appear, but other times I have to fool with it a, a bit. Pull the thread tight, use a double knot to hold it in place. There's no right or wrong side to a yo-yo. You can display this side or turn it over and use this side. You can use your pattern for placement or just eyeball where it should go and then tack it down. When your applique rows are completed, stitch these sections to the other rows, prepare the quilt sandwich, and quilt as you like. In the next video, you'll learn a different technique for making log cabin blocks. You'll also review the steps for setting blocks on point. Hope you stay tuned. Thanks for visiting LearnHowToQuilt.com. Please share our videos and patterns with your friends. Thanks.